Welcome to the Wellness as a Way of Life podcast, your one-stop, all-encompassing source of wellness, knowledge, wisdom, inspiration, and motivation. Here we teach you why not all wellness trends are for you, how to figure out which ones are, how to best adapt them for your personal wellness toolbox, and how ultimately to integrate your wellness practices so fully that they become to feel like brushing your teeth, a foundational part of who you are and not a check mark on your to-do list. Welcome back to Wellness as a Way of Life. Today on the podcast, I am absolutely honored and thrilled to share with you my recent conversation with Julie Pyatt, aka Sri Mati. She is my spiritual mentor, a friend, and a mystic mother, a musician, artist, chef, author, and healer who has lived her life immersed in devotion and expansive creativity. She is a way shower of finding the divine in all life experiences. I had the opportunity to meet her in person for the first time earlier this year at the Plant Powered Way Italia Retreat in Tuscany. Our conversation today was centered around her spiritual community called Water Tiger that she describes as the way to no way. I have been a member of this community for a little over two years now and have found it incredibly supportive and powerful. I invite her to unpack her philosophy on spirituality and discuss how there is no one-size-fits-all spirituality. Please enjoy her wisdom, candor, and humor as we dived into all things spiritual. Hi, Julie. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It's a true honor. I so appreciate your time and your wisdom and your energy. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Megan. Sweet to spend some precious life moments together. Yes. Um, more than any this this year, it's been a privilege to spend so much time with you in person and um, yeah, doing this. So well, I have to show I, you I, one thing. I have to show you one thing. So the wrap that you gave me is my sacred cover on my harmonium. Oh my goodness. So you're with me every day. And I wore also your earrings were a great inspiration and in putting something together. So some fashion thing that I ended up posting. Oh my goodness. Oh, thank you for sharing that. Wrong <laughs> <smart>. <laughs> Uh, I really wanted to talk today about Water Tiger specifically because I think it's two years now that I've been in it and it's been such an incredible supportive community and experience. And I sort of realized the other day we have very similar philosophies in terms of inviting people to take a little bit more agency and responsibility for their journey and personalizing it and uh, trusting that they are their own expert uh, of their own experience. So I know that you talk about water tiger being a way to no way. And I'd love for you to elaborate on that a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. Thanks so much. So I mean, very, very sort of timely subject and, and very, very um, important. Um, I think every single person who is in a human life is understanding that a spiritual practice is essential. It, it is not the 25th thing. It is the first thing. And so the way Water Tiger came about for me is having been, a, you know, one of the genetics that I was always here for transformation, always seeking what is beyond the veil, what is beyond this human existence. And you know, traverse many, many experiences in different lineages. I started to really get this clear awareness that it's all about perspective. And I realized that if I had, you know, asked for advice from a Lakota Sioux chief that I was working with, his answer would have his flavor, his lens, his experience, his lineage. And the same question asked to maybe a galactic walk-in from the planet Sirius obviously it would have a very different lens and taking this um, sort of example that I got from one of Osho's transmissions. And I don't even think this was his, I think it was one of his devotees that said it during a talk of his, but uh, they were talking, he was talking about, you know, if a frog, a tiger, 
and a monkey got together and said, we must form a board of standardized education. You know, you don't have to go much farther to start laughing because, Mm -hmm. you know, a tiger, you know, in our case, water tiger, the name of my platform is not going to spend time analyzing an elephant and pontificating why, you know, a, a giraffe should be more like a water tiger. And we do this as humans and it's really, uh, it's silly. It it doesn't make any sense. And the fact that we're all unique life forms in a realm where there are billions of life prints, I call them, uh, a, a life print, the way that you are. And yet in human culture, we're looking for a consensus. We, we run around like sheep, like what is the best diet? Who is right and who is wrong? And then we also tend to uh, destroy our heroes as well. So we'll over aggrandize someone and lift them up, lift them up, lift them up. And then the society, one thing, you know, or maybe it's a big thing because it's that human shadow that's operating inside every one of us. You know, then you see the other side and then it becomes, oh, they were fake. Everything about them was wrong. It's this very black and white or sort of extreme um, reaction to life. And life is full of many colors and many flavors and many tones in different proportions in different ways. And so it was, a I don't know, maybe Water Tiger is four years old now, maybe five years old. And I was overcome with this deep awareness that it was essential to me that I create an offering that was beautiful, simple, useful, and applicable to really anyone who chose to use the techniques. Furthermore, within that is those of us that, you know, I have a chart of a spiritual teacher. Uh, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I've known this, but I had a friend of mine do a Western chart and he's like, you have a chart of a spiritual teacher. I'm like, I know it's just there. And that's, that's no better or nor no worse than anybody else's chart. It just happens to be the way I was designed to serve. But, you know, there is this thing in, even in tantric yoga or yoga practice where, when you really understand even teaching a yoga class has karmic repercussions because really what is right, you can't teach a yoga class to 30 people because they're all in different spaces. It's all, you know, different approach. And of course I do, and we have, but it it maybe is what informs um, my um, approach of putting the responsibility on the devotee. What is different for me, I think as a modern spiritual teacher is I'm not taking responsibility for any student's life. And moreover, I'm not taking energy from that student. So I'm not getting my identity through that, through what the student thinks of me. I am appearing as a channel, a reflection of the one breath that is animating me and all life. And I hope and I intend and I pray, and I'm sure there are mistakes made, um, and also the perception is coming from the person that is sitting listening to you. So one of my experiences in the public, you know, I'll share something and somebody will say, well, Srimati said X. And I'm like, that is not what I said, but that is what they hear. So there's this sort of knowing in spiritual traditions that the guru appears in the form that the one breath that is animating all life can use to inspire you. So it's really um, not personal, you know, and uh, I have the blessing of serving through this lens. Um, And, you know, the reason I don't give people, uh, you know, five steps to transformation or three steps to clear your trauma, or I never, ever say that I never claim it. The way you interact with the living portal is up to you and you alone. Your journey to self-realization will be unique to you and you alone. And the sooner that you can get into a place of different layers of self-responsibility, self-regulation, self-sovereignty, the better. 
the better for you, the better for all of us, because it's that sovereign embodiment that really allows you to fulfill your divine design. And I don't think the one breath cares if you're spiritual or not at all. It depends. What is your, you know, what is your choice of expression? And, you know, we can look in nature for so many, uh, you know, there's nothing more beautiful than nature, right? And we are nature. So water tiger is this living sphere of expression, um, of, uh, perspectives that uh, may contain something that could offer somebody inspiration in their own, in their own journey on their own journey. And, um, and it's my blessing and it allows me to digest my own life mission further. Um, it's, it's an integral part because we're human beings and we connect and we are part of tribes and, and, um, and so it's what I'm, it's what we're doing here. I'm, I'm in a form. So if I can share something that can support somebody else, that's, that's my blessing. It's for my own digestion. It helps me evolve more. Um, so that's really the, you know, that's sort of the premise. That was the reason. And right now, um, because I'm moving into, um, expressing music and art as my first lens, um, we're preparing it so that water tiger can exist on its own long after I'm gone. So it's like, it's all the techniques are there. The teachings are there. You know, they, they, they are left to be used for whoever is aligned to it. So, um, yeah, that's kind of what I would say. But, oh, and then I always say the other thing is, is there's nothing more beautiful than a being that knows itself. You know, there, nothing matches that knowing of who you are. And, and I say that on a, on a life design of the one and also of knowing that you are beyond time and space, that I am that, you are that, the great awareness. Um, so anyway. Yeah. So can you sort of give us your perspective on, you know, the reality is I would say you at least inspire individuals to show up for their own personal practice as often as possible. You really don't put times or dates or anything like that on it but what can you speak to the sort of ebb and flow between honoring structure dogma you know rules and the reality you need well I personally enjoy having techniques at hand and at the same time just listening and tuning in and figuring out for example, in your portal, you know, what is the technique today that I'm drawn to and just trusting that that's okay? Yeah, so I'm not here to support dogmas at all. Um, and I'm not uh, here to support any rules. There's no rules. You're making the rules, you know. So um, again, it would just be individual. And this is all about, you know, we, we learn to trust ourselves more through trial and error, you know, through trying something. And, and really, I think it's wonderful to uh, understand that we are researchers. So you're in a life of discovery. We're in the world of form. And so the only thing you can do is try something and see what the, you know, there's the saying, you know, you will know by the fruit, you know, you'll know by the fruit. It's like, you'll do it. And you'll be like this. I mean, we have so many, excuse me, people that have shared. I mean, I, I can, I know I could drop the body today after this interview and water tiger did a huge service to hundreds of people, maybe thousands of people because of the ripple effect, you know, we have like, you know, we, we, we go anywhere between, you know, 250, 300 international in the portal right now. Um, but even then, I mean, the, the experiences are not light, you know, a water tiger gathering is not something that's, uh, I would say it's deeply meaningful. It's been deeply, deeply meaningful to a lot of people. And, you know, 
in this experience of lifting the vibration of life, which is what we're all doing, those of us that are alive in a body on planet Earth right now. And we really don't, we only need a certain percentage of the collective to amplify to a certain frequency. And so um, it, it, it doesn't have to be millions, um, but it's, it, you know, it, it's sort of like quantity, I'm sorry, quality over quantity, like it's the quality of that. And, um, you know, it's also just, uh, it's, it's a choice, but, you know, we all know it's like, I'm, I'm recording an album. I'm recording my third album right now. And, and, you know, I had, uh, I have eight tracks ready for the studio. And then upon listening to them and getting some counsel from my son and, you know, dear ally, um, you know, we decided to go back in and rework the songs uh, because we think the songs are that good because the work deserves the attention. So, you know, uh, like anything in life, like my plant-based cheese company, Shrimu, and, you know, developing this plant-based cheese that rivals dairy cheese that is unbelievable. I mean, it comes about through a lot of exploration and discovery, you know, hundreds of hours. But in those hours, there were no rules, there was no I have to or shoulds. It's um, being so del- so aligned that the desire leads you or being so um, present to the divine. Like I, I often talk about Sri Ramana Maharshi, one of the greatest realized Indian saints. Um, he mentioned, you know, the amount of divine interaction that you receive is directly related to the size of the container, which you meet her with. And, you know, like in the morning when I get up, I, I mean, I'm bowing to the ground This it's the first act I make, you know, and I'm visited by mystic things all day long, every day. <laughs> it's kind of normal uh, <laughs> because Uh, I'm paying attention and I've opened up and said, speak to me, you know, whisper in my ear, tell me. So um, it's just, uh, it's understanding that no one is going to resolve your life for you. No one's coming with a magic wand. No one has a protocol that is going to solve your a life crisis or, you know, or explain why you're in a body. That's why you're in a body to discover it. And you are unique, completely unique. There's not another Megan in the entire omniverse. So your blessing, what a privilege of life to have the mission to know yourself. I mean, what could be more fantastic? And, you know, we have a culture that trains us that to be self-loving is egotistical or narcissistic. And yet it can be, and certainly exist in our realm. Um, but there is something about loving um, the child of God that you are, that is so freeing and amplifying and magnetizing and freeing healing it's just a it's a it's a beautiful beautiful um state um and place so most of us spend most of our lives climbing back into that love affair with our own heart so water tiger is you know for that Mm -hmm. beautiful can you speak to the sort of the multi layers you always have the intention to have call so that there would be this strong sense of community because I think there's really powerful benefits to the living techniques and just practice them as you know you choose your own adventure sort of thing uh and tuning in and and feeling connected to a community through the practice of the same you know sharing these this portal but then I've always found it almost fascinating how I don't, I hardly write in personal questions yet they get answered because we all seem to be going through very similar threads. 
Definitely. And now this is a bit of a challenge. So I have a sort of like a, it's a way to no way. And I have a non-community community. community. (laughs) But the point was, I mean, and I just, you know, before we push record, I was just sharing the same thing. We all go through it. I mean, I, I, you know, birth four children myself. I, I'm married for over 25 years. I have three businesses. Um, and you know, I've, uh, uh, I have a lot of requirements on my energy and, um, you know, we, we all have so many things that are pulling us to the external and the real gold, the grail is in the internal, it's in the internal experience. And so, you know, many, many times, I mean, early in my journey, you know, I, I would read a book and they would, you know, the book would say meditate and then I would never meditate, you know, and then I would read another book and then it says, oh, meditate. Oh yeah, that meditation thing. Oh, there it is again. And then, so isn't it funny that, you know, we come to it in divine timing when it, when it's right. And so one of the benefits of being just, um, you know, exercising that muscle throughout all these, you know, many years that I've been interested in these things in these pursuits um it allows for a very potent um ability and and you know there's also a saying uh in many spiritual traditions that it's important that you exercise this money when you're muscle when you're uh young when you're healthy when you're vibrant because when you feel like shit you it's very hard to develop this so if you're healthy or if you are able to sit, or if you your brain works, if, you know, uh, this is the time, this is the time. So in a way, I mean, we're, we're really just preparing for the death portal, which is, li- it's literally a birth into more life. Um, but in our culture, it would, you know, we tend to sort of be ignoring death, act, acting as if it's not going to happen. And I have a multidimensional perspective about death in any case. Um, but, uh, it is good to understand that, um, these bodies are temporary vehicles for the spirit and soul. And, um, you know, you exist beyond time and space. So when this body drops, you will, it will not be lights out black. That's it. You will still exist. The consciousness stays. Um, and you know, there's a million different places and forms. And so that would be a whole other cosmic water tiger, you know, sort of perspective. But, um, you know, one of the things, I mean, to me, it's always been expansive for me to understand that we are multidimensional beings actually living in simultaneous time. And so just as a fun sort of experience, um, journal and write down what are the things that delight you what are the life form, life forms that delight you uh, what is something that happened that is a that is a little point you know today i just said that i'm going to be going back into art and um, sculpting and painting but you know music actually in the forefront but uh, my daughter who is actually a painter she she was like, mom, you should, I have these three, three drawings that are uh, nudes and they're even border on erotic art. And she's like, mom, like take them out and frame them. And so I'm doing that right now, um, to bring that back in that memory back into, you know, my space. But I also just today on my hike this morning out of nature, I was reminded when I was probably in first grade, uh, in the mountains of Colorado at my elementary school, we had a sculpting contest and the whole school, like the whole grade went out and sculpted sculptures out of snow. And the one that we made was a bunny, like a gigantic bunny for me, like the bunny was as tall as I was out of snow. And that experience was just so delightful to me. Like it was one of the most wondrous things I'd ever seen in my life. And reflecting back, I say, oh, it was just really present there. Like how much I loved that experience. Another experience during the same period would be uh, we did a a study on the Plains uh, Native Americans And we, you know, created teepees and drew backdrops and we, um, 
I think I, I had a Buffalo costume on, um, but I was so uh, enamored with the Plains Indians. And, and now after all these years, I've retrieved a simultaneous lifetime in another time space in that culture. And so, you know, the clues are all there. We just forget that they have deeper meaning than maybe what we were aware of. Mm-hmm. Last question. Um, can you, you sort of touched on it there, you know, how inviting people to be curious, um, but also allowing it to be enjoyable and fun and sort of that being a lens of of curiosity of what, where do I feel uh, that this was a fun experience? Is that sort of a theme that you can paint throughout your life? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think I have great humor. I mean, the one thing that I share with my husband and my kids is, you know, we, we can laugh at ourselves and at humanity and at situations. And it's, it is fun. And, and also understanding that no one has a better sense of humor than the universe. I mean, (laughs) the things that show up are just, you know, they're funny. So humor is necessary um, to offset you know, some of the horrors of this planet, you know, and we have to remember to not take ourselves so seriously. And we're we're really not that important. Like I just, I was just telling you how important you are, but then there's another lens where you're actually not important at all. And so when you're um, traversing sort of the razor's edge, uh, you know, some traditions call it the middle path or, but, you know, on the razor's edge, you don't get like, you don't get a guarantee, You're not like, oh, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to be famous or I'm going to, you know, I'm going to win. You don't know you (laughs) many times during those journeys, you have to give it up. You have to be willing to do it for the love of doing it without any reward. It's not a quid pro quo. It's not like a tit for tat. It's how, how authentic is your commitment? Like how much do you mean it? And, um, and yeah, we, uh, we as a society need to laugh more. We need to laugh and dance and a lot of the perspective from the multi realms, especially with what's going on right now on planet earth. I mean, this is a reclamation of a realm that has been controlled by anti-life forces for thousands of years. And we are just coming to reclaim her. It has actually already happened. We just have to live into it. But the, the ones out of the body say that if we knew what was happening, we would be dancing in the streets celebrating because we, you know, our personalities may want it to stay status quo because we don't want to suffer. But the truth of the matter is like, we got to rip the bandaid off. Like, you know, we, we, we've got to, you know, you've got to go through the change. You can't, it certainly can't stay the same. Um, And so The one thing that I would like to share before we close is that the key to transcending that is in the present moment. So if you're looking for somebody to give you a timeline, a magic wand, a prediction, you're wasting your time. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Things are happening in the moment. We are creating our life experience in the moment with our words, with our thoughts, with our actions, and we are crafting it in real time. So remember that you can shift situations with your energetic um, uh, quality. So there is nothing written in stone. It's a moving, oscillating, vibrating experience. And so remember that you're casting spells, as I said. So where are your thoughts and what do you want to create? So it's very easy for the ego to call out everything that's wrong. And less uh, an activity that is less served is imagining, visioning, speaking, and dancing into the world that you want to live in. And that is the change, the shift. Hmm. Perfect. I love the the dancing into the the world that you want. (laughs) That image is beautiful. 
Well, thank you so much for your incredible wisdom and um, your mentorship over the years and your friendship. I really appreciate it. Uh, we'll share all the links to all of Julie's offerings in, in the show notes. Is there anything else you wanted to say? That's it. It's lovely to be with you. Thank you so much for inviting me. And thank you for having a half hour show. That's amazing. (laughs) (laughs) We did it. Thanks. We did it. All right. So much love. Bye. Bye. Hey there. One last thing I wanted to share with you If you're enjoying this podcast, it would mean so much to me if you could rate and review it on your favorite podcast platform. It really does help us grow the show and this being so important to me to get this message out to more women to help them optimize their wellness and ultimately their lives. This is my mission and I would greatly appreciate it if you could support the podcast by rating and reviewing. Thanks in advance. Have a good one.